Hi there, what's up? Hope you're doing well. This is Nate back at it with another video. Now, usually video essays have something to say based on factual information, maybe about a movie or TV show, but today is a little bit different. I want to shine a light on a theory I have that's actually kind of well known, but doesn't have much conversation surrounding it. Batman, the world's greatest detective, the Dark Knight, Gotham's protector, the caped crusader, genius, playboy, philanthropist has many traits. Throughout the years of Batman's rich history, he has worn many hats and taken on many characteristics that add depth to his character. On the surface, casual fans might say he's just an angry, angsty man-child that dresses up like a bat and beats up criminals when the sun goes down. And while that overgeneralization may be true, Batman is so much more than that. Almost to the point where writing this video and making this project, I had unconsciously convinced myself that Batman was a real person. He has so many traits that extend Batman from a comic book character to a complex individual. Years of Batman's publication history only add to his numerous adversaries. They started out as goofy, campy characters into complex identities almost on par with Batman himself. And this is where the theory comes in. Batman's rogues gallery represents a distorted reflection of Batman's numerous attributes about his abstract form of thinking and his physical identity, bringing Bruce's numerous traits to the extreme and exaggerating a single aspect of Batman, in turn making them the villain. There could be a theory for almost every single one of his villains, but we don't have time for that, obviously. I wanted to focus on a handful of his villains and the ones that were most interesting to talk about. First, I want to center on the villains that distort Batman's way of life, his thought process, and his internal spirit. Addicted to the devotion of their distinct worldviews, one bad day is all it takes to create these unstoppable monsters. Joker's terrifying lack of humanity is everything Batman seeks to avoid. The Joker, throughout Batman history, is the only villain Batman can justify killing. But he knows if he takes that one step, if he goes that far, he might as well be the Joker himself. All I've ever wanted to do is kill him. A day doesn't go by when I don't think about subjecting him to every horrendous torture he's dealt out to others, and then end him. Aw, oh, so you do think about me. But if I do that, if I allow myself to go down into that place, I'll never come back. Speaking of Batman's no killing rule, Ra's al Ghul is everything that Batman is. Cold, still, calculated, angry, intelligent, a leader, matched in every sense of the word. Yet Ra's is a killer. Ra's al Ghul sees killing someone as cleansing the earth, as a need to be met. Ra's exemplifies the importance of Batman's no killing rule and their opposite views of carrying out justice. Like two sides of a coin, Batman and Bruce Wayne, Harvey Dent and Two-Face, right and wrong, black and white, what's fair and what isn't, what's just and what isn't. Two-Face exemplifies Batman's constant struggle to balance the double life he lives. Playboy philanthropist by day, Gotham's protector by night. Harvey Dent, Gotham's district attorney, white knight by day, and Two-Face, the corrupt mob boss by night. Speaking of opposites, Man-Bat is the exaggerated representation of Batman's anger, his rage, his violence, his sometimes animalistic behavior. Man-Bat is the most obvious example of this theory, all the way down to the name order swap, Batman and Man-Bat. Scarecrow's distorted evil form of fear and his use of it as a weapon against those who oppose him, using fear as a form of abuse and hurt against the innocent rather than a tool against the unlawful. Not now. You are a disgrace. No. No. You are not my father. I am not a disgrace. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! And then we come to Mr. Freeze and the constant need for justice for the one he has lost, his beloved Nora or Bruce Wayne's parents. This need to put matters into their own hands, feeling that they have lost something, everything that made them feel whole, that warm feeling that they may never feel again, turning their hearts cold. Pray you hear me somehow, some place, some place where a warm hand waits for mine.
These are the villains that I believe are aspects of Batman's psyche. Next, I want to cover the villains that exaggerate Batman's physical nature, starting with Bane. His sense of coming from the worst upbringing possible and turning that pain into physical strength and dominance. Greed for having a muscle advantage over the opponent, forcing their bodies to the extreme, turning their bodies into the ultimate weapon. The Riddler, on the other hand, reflects Batman's mind and brain powder. Edward Nigma seeks to outwit the Batman's detective skills, using his genius level intellect as a mind game. This obsession with brilliance and intellect pits these two against not in a contest of will, might, strength, or power, but of mind. The Penguin mirrors Bruce Wayne's monetary power he wields with his philanthropy and the people that work for him under a payroll. The Penguin is a rich, high society gentleman, owner of the Iceberg Lounge that seeks to take over Gotham, not with his genuine good looks or attractive nature, but with his exuberant amount of wealth, a trait he shares with the trust fund boy, Bruce Wayne. Elliot and Bruce, lived very similar to each other growing up. Childhood best friends, grew up in a rich household, basically lived the same life. But in this circumstance, Bruce was the fortunate one. Because of the abusive and malevolent household Elliot grew up in, he grew to resent his parents, even go so far as to murdering his parents in the comics. Bruce was the one that had nice, loving, involved parents while Elliot did not. Both set of parents met the same fate, yet Bruce and Elliot did not. Why, Wayne? The two of you are friends. That brat's family destroyed me. And now, I will destroy him. The Wayne stood by you. Ah, oh, yes, the great surgeon Thomas Wayne. To think he was once my idol. Until he ruined everything. He did all he could to save your parents after the crash. I'm sorry you lost your father, but he saved your mother's life. He denied me what was rightfully mine. The car crash wasn't an accident. It was you. You wanted to kill them. Poison Ivy was probably the hardest to understand and think through, but what stood out to me was her undying need to physically protect what is in need. She believes that she is the protector of the environment. To go so far as the protector of the green, and the earth. This senseless need to protect those in need is reflective as Batman sees himself as Gotham City's protector. Gotham City as a place he needs to endlessly protect no matter the opposition. And finally, the only villain on this list that gives hope to Batman's character, Catwoman. Their love affair shows that Batman is not completely soulless. Her criminal nature proves that not everyone that commits a crime is a psychopath or even a bad person. In fact, real authentic relationships can come about when two sides meet in the middle and become one. Bruce, Bruce stop. 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 Just for today. Don't be Batman. Don't be the mask. It's okay. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I did this theory justice by using different resources through this project while still putting my own spin on it. I really appreciate the support and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video.